past couple of years is this. We have seen this new kind of culture develop. I call it a culture of sharing. We really didn't have it four years ago when we had the beginnings of Facebook, Twitter didn't exist. Many of you started probably using these tools. And what's happened, it's become frictionless in terms of our ability to share things with each other. Now, I'm 44 years old. I have kids in elementary school. And it kind of still wigs me out that I get to school on the school patio, and a mom comes up to me and goes, hey, what did you think about that party last night that you were at? I'm like, how did you know I was there? Oh, it was on your Facebook page. And I keep forgetting to myself, though, that this is not something that just my work friends or my techie friends use. These are my friends who I went to school with, who are the parents of my kids. So I've got to watch and be careful what I actually put into my Twitter stream. Now, what's interesting about this culture of sharing is that it's really changed something in our, in our lives. And it's about the relationships have also changed. And you didn't see, we saw this no matter what your political uh, ways that you think about things. But Obama did an amazing job of changing the way politics work. Inside of the old political way of doing things, the relationships were very staid. Unless you knew somebody, unless you were giving $2,000 to a campaign, you really didn't have a relationship with a candidate. But what Obama did is he changed that because of the sharing that he did, with just the beginning of it in 2008. And so therefore, if you wanted to be invested in that campaign, all you had to do was give $10 and maybe tell other people, and suddenly you were raising $2,000 too, just like anybody else. And that kind of power was really transformative in that relationship and won in the election. What's interesting is that relationship hasn't necessarily changed in terms of governance. Much harder in many ways. Uh, to be able to sustain that relationship. Now, what's, that, what's changed inside of organizations, though, is that the way that we run organizations, the way we work with each other, hasn't changed, even though those relationships have changed. So this is the way that most organizations look like. Familiar? Command and control? Hierarchical? I think every organization has some kind of org chart that you use that defines who reports to who, how information flows, and how things get done. How many of you actually work inside that org chart all the time? Okay, Pretty consistent, but I think many of you probably think, this is the way I actually get work done. It looks much more like a mess. You have relationships across different departments and silos. The information flow goes all over the place. It's not in neat little silos anymore. And what we've seen is that information and technology has changed how we do work because Hierarchy was needed, and especially in these large-scale enterprises that came up over the past century, because you needed that kind of control. And everyone from Peter Drucker to Tom Peters have talked about flattening organization hierarchies. And they'll get rid of things, get closer to your customers, broaden out the responsibilities. That's been going on for about 40 years now. But we've never been able to actually do that inside of organizations, because we had no way of actually sharing that information back and forth. Now we do. These technologies, collaborative, social technologies, open ways of sharing information haven't been followed through with the same kind of structures. So what I'm going to talk about today is, is, is this. Why is social so hard? Many of you have been working on this with organizations. It's something I've seen in the consulting we do at Altimeter Group that we talk to companies that go, we get it, we understand this is there, but why is it so hard? Why can't they implement this and make it stick? It's because of this. They don't want to give up control. It's really hard. They say, well, you want me to have a conversation with a customer? <clears throat> Actually talk to a customer? Well, what do I say to them? <laughs> They're used to marketing, 30 second blasts of messages. What do you actually say when you come face to face to a customer? Or a peer, somebody outside the organization. What do you say when you're stepping out from behind the firewall? to go and talk to somebody. And I believe that if you want to craft real relationships in business, real relationships in the ways that we work with each other, just inside of organizations, you have to craft real relationships. And how many of you are in relationships that you truly control? Would any of you raise your hand if your spouse was in the room or your partner was in the room? Probably not. And so I, I think the thing that's becoming very real is that there's a new, new type of leadership that's needed.